Hello, good morning everyone. I hope you can all hear and see me. Um, welcome to this webinar of CBI on how to enter the European IT and business process outsourcing market. Um, this webinar is organized by CBI, the Center for the Promotion of Imports from Developing Countries. We are part of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency and funded mainly by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. My name is Sanne Bogus. I'm a Program Manager Market Intelligence at CBI and among others responsible for the IT and business process outsourcing sector. Well, CBI offers uh, market intelligence on the European market for 14 different sectors, ranging from IT and BP outsourcing to tourism and spices and herbs. Our market intelligence is specifically aimed at exporters from developing countries. It is free and contains a lot of tips on how to best enter the European market. Um, today, we are here to present some of the key insights from a number of our studies related to entering the European IT and business process outsourcing market. The presentation is given by Marike de Haan, one of our market researchers for this sector, and Laszlo Kloeks, who is an expert in the sector that is involved in our market research. I am happy to see that uh, many of you are joining today. Um, at this moment, we have about uh, 35 participants, but I think there are more to join uh, in any minute. Um, we especially welcome people from uh, the countries there where we have programs in, uh, which are Senegal, Uganda, and Egypt, uh, where we will start the program soon. Um, this webinar will take one hour. After my introduction, Marike and Laszlo will give their presentation of about 35 minutes. And their PowerPoint presentation will be sent to you afterwards. And after the presentation, we have about 15 minutes to answer a selection of questions from the audience. Uh, this means that if you have any questions during the, answer, uh, the webinar, you can put them in the question box and uh, we as organizers will receive them and uh, we will uh, select the ones that we will answer. Um, and after the questions and answers uh, and before we close the session, I will give you a bit more information about the market intelligence that we offer. Uh, maybe Laszlo, can you put on the next slide already? Yes, thank you. Um, so people can already see uh, the link to our uh, market intelligence information. Um, yeah, I hope everyone can see the presentation on the screen and that uh, audio uh, is fine. Um, I, if you have any uh, questions uh, related to to yeah to the webinar or technical questions, please put them in the chat. Um, and I wish you all a very interesting and useful webinar and I would like to give the floor now uh, to Marike and Laszlo. Hello everyone, my name is Marike de Haan. I am a market researcher for Globally Cool. We're based in the Netherlands and we have been doing CBI's uh, outsourcing studies for many years. And this year I'm very happy to be the lead market researcher, but I could not have done it without Laszlo. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Laszlo. Uh, I'm an independent consultant and I'm working in the fields of uh, IT outsourcing and business process outsourcing. What I do, I, I help coach, train, uh, assist, advise uh, small and medium-sized uh, companies on how to successfully enter the European market and set up uh, a sustainable outsourcing business line. I have been working with CBI for a very, very long time. Um, and in the past uh, 20 years, I have been working in over 40 countries and with many, many uh, IT service providers that wanted to enter the European market. So I wish you good luck. And I, I hope that we are going to provide you uh, some useful uh, insights um, and some some answers to your uh, to your questions. So then we can go on to the next slide because um, you have gotten to know us a little bit, and now we like to know something about you. 
uh, we'll start off with a poll. Uh, can you please tell us which type of services you provide? You can select your answers. And while you do, we're waiting. I'm very curious <laughs> what, your, what your answers will be. And we're going to wait until we have about 70% of the people voted. And then everybody can see the answer. Sixty-five percent. So we're we're still counting votes. Does that sound familiar to anyone? We're almost there. There we go. Um, can everybody? Yeah. There are the answers. Okay, so we have a lot of software development companies. Actually, we have a little bit of everything, a lot of others, uh, other ITO, other BPO. Well, welcome everyone. Um, we will have very interesting things for you today, for all of you, uh, regardless of which uh, sector you're from. Um, we will be covering six topics. We can go on to the next slide and you can see what we're going to cover today. The next slide will show, yeah, great. Those are the six topics that we will be talking about today. Um, um, you can see uh, in the uh, upper left corner where we are uh, in the presentation. So if we can go to the next slide again, you can see the example. This is, for example, topic one of six. And um, is the elephant in the room because we're here to talk about your work, but there is a big thing in the world going on right now. And it's COVID-19. Um, everyone knows that it disrupted business on a global scale, but the effects within the outsourcing industry vary greatly. During the last webinar, we had a poll that gave us the following results that you can see on your screen. There are quite a few people who reported the negative effects of COVID-19 on their business. Um, this was mostly because um, they were unable to execute their work because uh, in their countries you had probably stay-at-home orders and it was difficult for you to work. Um, it could also be um, that uh, that you were uh, had a lot of work to do, but you were um, you were in a sector uh, that was hit very hard, like tourism or the event industry. We can also see that about 10% of the participants uh, gave a, a positive uh, uh, noted a positive re um, effect of COVID on their uh, sector. And that was mostly among companies that were able to continue their business and were working in sectors that needed more solutions that could be outsourced, for example, healthcare or logistics. At this moment, we are almost half a year further along, and we would like to know where you guys are at today. So let us know, how does it, uh, has it affected your business so far? We have another poll for you. Please uh, take me to the next slide. Yeah. These are the right answers in the poll because I see, oh yeah, I see it, sorry. Again, we will wait until 70% of the people voted. I can already see some results. We're almost at 70% of the votes. There we go. Ha, this is quite interesting, actually. Um, the same uh, percentage of people said that they were affected negatively. We're very sorry to hear that, of course. 
Um, but the people that responded positively has gone up. Actually, this is really in line with our research. Um, because um, um, we can see positive changes on the demand side, especially next year, 2021, promises to be a good year for BPO and ITO. There will be a bigger, a bigger demand for outsourcing services. This is especially the case in the areas of security, digital working environments, cloud services, and artificial intelligence. Why is this? It's because COVID-19 accelerated the digital transformation. Um, and countries that were traditionally not very open towards outsourcing, like for example, Germany, um, they have become more open towards outsourcing because they had to let their own people work away from the site. They are more open towards letting uh, other people do work for them, um, like for example, uh, in outsourcing. So um, to learn more about where the opportunities are, in this new era, we invite you to read our research. Um, and now let's get to the point of why we're all here. You want to know how you can enter the European markets. And Laszlo is going to talk you through that. Give the floor to Laszlo. All right. So uh, before you uh, try to enter the European market, you definitely need to do a few things um, and if i want to tell you a little bit more about it uh, then uh, we can divide those activities into uh, into basically two distinctive uh, phases uh, the first phase is uh, planning and preparation and the, the second one is when you can meet uh, with your potential buyers and at the end sign a contract and uh, do the job. So those are the two distinctive phases of uh, entering the, the, the European uh, market. Uh, and one of the most important thing that you have to do is to create a go-to-market plan. Um, in CBI, we call it uh, the export uh, marketing plan. Uh, and that export marketing plan also contains a strategy now i would like to show you a chart of how usually uh, buyers and suppliers meet in this chart on the upper part you see the buyer process and on the, the lower part uh, below the the dotted line you see the provider process uh, so that is the process that normally companies like yourself would go through in order to maximize the chances and minimize the risks uh, as you can see that there are a lot of uh, lot of steps a lot of tools uh, a lot of processes attached to this uh, to this chart uh, and we advise companies uh, to go through all those steps uh, use all those uh, tools um, and well cbi has um, programs uh, training programs tools uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of presentations covering all these subjects now in this presentation we are going to uh, we are going to uh, to present just a selected number of uh, of those uh, uh, those subjects but i would like to advise you to study this chart very carefully uh, and make at least an inventory of what uh, do you have already covered in your company and what uh, what are those areas that are still uh, missing this is very important uh, because uh, going through all this uh, will maximize your uh, your uh, your chances um, in the european market now let me tell you a little bit about uh, about uh, strategies uh, your strategic plan will answer um, at least three key questions the first one is why why do you want to enter the european market uh, how does that fit into your overall vision and mission now the second question that uh, your strategy will answer is how do you want to do that and in this uh, regards um, you have to answer a a 
a, a long list of questions from uh, from the question of of who are your uh, who are your uh, your your potential buyers um, how are you going to uh, how are you going to sell uh, whatever you want to sell what do you want to sell on the first place so there are a lot of questions to answer here and the third question that your strategy is going to answer is what actions are you going to take and that is uh, actually your your action plan uh, and what we normally say is that when you when you go through your actions uh, at the end of the day at the end of the process at the end of the time frame uh, all your objectives uh, should be met so that is uh, those are the three questions that your strategy should answer uh, what is a strategy uh, I would like to tell you a little bit about it because uh, very often we talk about it, but we don't kind uh, of of define it uh, exactly what it is. So a strategy is a roadmap from A to B. In order to uh, in order to be uh, to to have it measurable, we have to uh, we have to create benchmarks of where we are. So we need to create a, a situation analysis. We have to set our starting point and there are tools to it uh, to use uh, and we also need to uh, to set up our endpoint that is our export objectives and of course there is a, a time frame to it and along the way uh, there are roadblocks and all kinds of uh, all kinds of milestones uh, to take into consideration now when you uh, when you uh, work on all those questions and work out all the possible roadblocks at the end you will have a roadmap of how you are get, going to get from a to b and that is going to be uh, your uh, strategy uh, so far that is the only thing i um, i can uh, i can tell you because of the time limitation but uh, there is one uh, one important thing uh, that in the CBI program and in CBI itself, there are plenty of tools uh, mm -hmm. and training programs on how to create this go-to-market strategy, which we call the export marketing plan. Uh, and now I think Marike would like to talk about uh, requirements. Yeah. Well, I will talk about... <clears throat> Well, um, so let's just say that you've done everything that 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 Laszlo just just told you. You did a great job. Then, um, then we're ready for the next step. And you can see the slide. It looks pretty boring, and and maybe it is because the letters are so small that you probably can't can't even read this slide. But that's okay because um, um, everything that you need to know is in our research. But we want to put it in here because this is about requirements. What requirements do you need to enter the European market successfully? And it really depends on, on the product you have uh, and the country you are, are targeting and also the sector that your product or service is for. So um, our research explains elaborately each requirement if you need it and how to qualify. But before you decide to certify yourself, um, you have to ask yourself three questions. Questions number one is, is it good for my company? Question number two, is it good for my clients? And question number three, does it have marketing value? So we can go to the next slide <laughs> because um, we have now looked, looked inwards um, we've talked with Laszlo about your company and your strategy. You've talked with me briefly about the requirements that you need. So now you are ready to go out there. Um, so this topic is slightly more exciting. It's your online presence. Uh, it has to be really good. Uh, it's another key element that you need to sort out before you enter the European market. Um, buyers, but, but, and they no longer wait for companies to introduce themselves. They're looking for you and they like to do their own research. 
And this has become even more important in the COVID-19 crisis because there is no way for them to spontaneously run into you somewhere. They have to go online to find you. So your website is your most important and valuable marketing asset. Let's read with me. It's on this slide. Your website should be developed by a professional, well-maintained, up-to-date, search engine optimized, customer focused. It should be responsive. It should contain high quality, easily accessible information. You should include references, testimonials, and clear calls to action. Um, of course, all of this and more you can find in our research, but let me show you an example of a good website. It's in the next slide. This website is uh, by Volo. It's an Armenian software development company. They are based in Ukraine. Um, you can see that they provide clear and easily accessible information. They have clear calls to action. They provide case studies and they have an up-to-date blog. If you have some time, we really recommend you to check out their website. But don't do it now because Laszlo is going to talk about intermediaries. But before we are going to do that, uh, we are going to uh, make a poll on what type of intermediaries uh, do you use in order to find the uh, buyers? All right, I think 73% uh, of you already uh, voted. And it turns out that uh, the majority of you have never worked with uh, intermediaries. 28% uh, of you have already did before uh, COVID-19. And, and only 5% uh, uh, started using uh, them. Uh, or one of the intermediaries uh, uh, since COVID-19 uh, broke out. Now, I would like to tell you one thing before we, we start to, uh, to talk about intermediaries, that uh, statistically and um, also my experience shows that the, the most viable way into the European market is working with one kind of uh, intermediaries. And I would like to show you at this point three of them uh, and also uh, tell you a little bit about uh, their, uh, their differences. So the first one is um, matchmakers or consultants. Um, you need to know that a matchmaker is a door opener. It can be a person, uh, it can also be a company, but the most important thing is that a matchmaker has already a, a large, um, already established uh, list of potential clients. So a matchmaker is not a person, let's talk about a person, is not a person who is going to make uh, cold calls, all right? But a matchmaker is a person or a company with a large number of uh, actual and live contacts. So they don't have to look after uh, or run after uh, them. Now, what does a matchmaker or a consultant do? Uh, they, they make contacts, but you have to make the sales. So the sales process is in your hand. And if you, if you, if you like the marketing process, the contacting process, uh, a contact development process is in the hand of the uh, matchmaker. Now, a matchmaker can have single client yourself dedicated uh, dedicated uh, relationship or can have multiple clients 
uh, what you pay is usually a retainer and a success fee. Now, this is a very tricky question because you have to determine in a contract the level of retainer and also when and how success fee is going to be paid out. Uh, this is a, a fairly complicated question, but also a very important one, because if you are not settling this question properly in a contract, then at the end, uh, you can lose a lot of money and time. Uh, really good matchmakers can be uh, very expensive. Uh, and one of the most important things uh, with the matchmakers is that you need clear objectives of what you expect from the matchmaker to deliver. So the expectations and the objectives have to be very clear, set forth in um, the contract. So those are the matchmakers. Now, very often I, ask, uh, I get the question uh, about the difference between a matchmaker and a sales and marketing representative. Now, the most important difference is that the sales and marketing representative not only makes contacts, but also holds the sales process. So that person or company also makes the sales on your behalf. Uh, and eventually, if the relationship, if this business relationship is evolving uh, uh, very well, uh, then uh, eventually the sales and marketing representative can also manage uh, your project to a certain um, to a certain uh, extent. The payment schedule is again retainer and success fee, or uh, it can also be a fixed uh, monthly fee. It can also be expensive. Now I can um, maybe I can just give you one piece of advice when you when you try to work together with sales and marketing representatives or uh, matchmakers in the contract you should always put a clause about exit uh, exit possibilities so um, after a certain period of time both parties should have the possibility to uh, to end the contract without uh, any uh, consequences this is, a, this is a more complicated question, but it's, uh, it's very, very important because uh, if you don't put in the contract an exit clause, then you might uh, end up uh, locked into that contract for a period uh, that you don't want without a, uh, a payment, without a delivery from, the, from, the, from your, your intermediary, and though you still have to pay. So that is uh, very important. There are more uh, more interesting uh, interesting things uh, with working together with sales and marketing uh, representatives, but uh, I think those are the most important uh, characteristics and uh, let's say uh, uh, features that you need to take into consideration. Now the third type of uh, of uh, European intermediary is uh, what we call a strategic partner. Uh, when we are talking about small and medium-sized companies, uh, very often that strategic partner is a software company or an outsourcing or a BPO company like yourself. So an independent software vendor and other ser uh, outsourcing service provider located uh, in Europe. Uh, Nowadays, uh, they can be onshore, nearshore, or even offshore. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the strategic partners are always professional uh, partners uh, doing uh, a lot of things common with your own uh, company. Uh, if you know very well, and that's why it's important to talk about strategies and go to mar market planning, if you know exactly what you what you want to sell or what you can sell, it's it's relatively easy to find or identify those uh, professional uh, partners. But it's very difficult usually to establish a business relationship and convince them 
to start uh, to work together with you. Uh, your strategic partner is going to manage uh, the projects and also responsible for uh, client communication. Uh, you also need to know that the work, the workload that you get is very often based on a when and if necessary basis. So eventually there is no guaranteed work that you get. If you can get guaranteed amount of work, then you are very lucky uh, because usually the relationship starts with this uh, project-based uh, working together. Uh, there are a number of risks associated with uh, working together with strategic partners. One thing is that uh, it can limit your marketing and market access uh, possibilities. Also, you also have to take into consideration uh, the intellectual property uh, subjects like, um, like the IP rights you have or the IP rights you might uh, be able to use by working together with strategic partners. Now, um, if you go to the CBI website, uh, there is a study on the European intermediary landscape that had been uh, put together uh, uh, by CBI together with a, uh, with a uh, I think, German uh, market research uh, company. I would like to mention a few other possibilities to work together with uh, intermediaries, and that is working together with BSOs and associations. Uh, business support organizations or BSOs, uh, you can find them in your own country like uh, export promotion organization and you can also find them um, in foreign countries uh, in Europe. Uh, usually they organize all kinds of events and support programs uh, that you can uh, you can uh, you can use. There are not that many associations uh, available specialized on outsourcing. Uh, in Europe I can mention uh, GSA, the Global Sourcing As Association, and the German, Austrian, uh, Swiss Outsourcing Association. And you can find uh, those websites um, uh, yourself. Uh, these organizations organize events, they have publications, and they have all kinds of, uh, all kinds of marketing channels. You or your country might be able to, uh, to capitalize uh, on. Uh, and with that, uh, we largely finished what we wanted to tell you, but I would like to, to summarize and uh, highlight a few things. Uh, when you want to enter the, the market, at the end of the day, you are going to have a strategic plan and you are going to do a lot of marketing uh, and promotion activities. But at the end of the day, the goal is that you can set up a sustainable outsourcing business line uh, working together with European partners. Now, the whole process starts with making as many business contacts uh, as possible. One of the most important uh, errors that companies uh, make that they don't make enough European contacts. Uh, and I would like to highlight the importance of that, because if you are not going to create enough context, then you are not going to have most probably uh, at the end of the process, which we call uh, the sales funnel, uh, contracts signed. So I would, uh, I would really like to ask you to, uh, to study this uh, chart very carefully uh, and uh, more importantly, be prepared to make as many contacts, uh, high quality European contacts uh, as possible. Uh, what we talked about uh, in this uh, presentation, COVID-19 created a, a completely new situation. Uh, nevertheless, or even more importantly, you have to prepare uh, very well. Uh, if you have already clients, uh, your effort has to focus on keeping them and most importantly, just keep communicating. Uh, 
this is the time and at this time you might even have time for it to create a go to market uh, plan uh, and you can get all kinds of help from cbi for that uh, you can refine uh, your online presence and uh, make as many high quality european contacts uh, as possible now finally i would like to uh, to ask you one question which uh, which might uh, you think as a food for thought how would you make let's say 25 new high quality european contacts every month in the coming 12 months now uh, just think about it because many companies uh, to start their market entry uh, to, uh, to journey uh, they are not able to do that so please just try to think about it how would you do that i think it's very uh, very very important with that i think uh, i think we are going to finish uh, the presentation um, and I think uh, you still have time, we still have time for uh, questions. Yes, thank you very much, Laszlo and Marike, um, for your presentation. As mentioned before, uh, we will send the presentation to the, to the attendees after this webinar and also a uh, link to the recording of this uh, webinar. Um, so as Laszlo mentioned, it's now uh, time for questions and answers. Uh, so we have uh, already received a couple of uh, questions, uh, but please, if you have any other questions, uh, put them in the, in the chat box. Um, I, can, um, I can name a couple of questions. Uh, one of the questions was, uh, about uh, slide four, I think that you presented it, uh, Marike, and um, there was something unclear about uh, what is meant with uh, clear calls to action um, that one has to provide in their online uh, uh, presentation in their website. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for your questions. It's a very good one. Uh, a call to action. Uh, is a part of a web page, or it could also be on a, an advertisement or a piece of content that encourages the audience to do something. So if you have a website, it, um, the people who visit your website can just read it, but um, you can also include call to action buttons. You probably saw them like a, a click here, um, free trial, learn more, ask us anything like those like short uh, sentences, they are calling you to take action. And that's where they're called call to action. You can find online a lot of information about how to, uh, how to integrate them into your current website. Um, the internet gives you advice on, for example, which colors work best, what kind of phrases to use. So I'm sure with this information, uh, you can find something that will work for your company. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marike. And then uh, going on uh, on this topic more or less, um, the same person would like to know uh, what are other mechanisms on as uh, for online presence than uh, websites? Are there ed any other um, mechanisms? And uh, one other question is, for example, about a good portal to list your company on. Yeah, those are also really good questions. Um, we um, mention uh, quite a lot of them in our research. Um, let me think of the ones that we use. Uh, of course, when it comes to online presence, you can use LinkedIn. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of you will be familiar with that. There, it's, it's really good for uh, meeting other people professionally. Um, there's also something about online events that you can participate in, um, which uh, can also uh, lead to more contacts. Like Laszlo said, it's really important to get a lot of contacts before you can get a contract. Um, yeah, 
those are on top of my head right now but there 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 is more in our in our research yes and that research is available at uh, cbi.eu slash market information but i will tell a little bit more at uh, after the question and answer session and also do you want to add anything or yeah well um on the web most of the most of those platforms that uh, that offer work uh, those are usually very small contracts uh, for freelancers like upwork and uh, and such so getting directly work uh, from the web uh, is, is mostly for uh, for very small uh, projects uh, freelancers individuals um, but I think uh, one of the most important channel in order to make contacts uh, is uh, LinkedIn at this uh, at this very moment. I think one of, that is one of the most uh, important channel um, to use um, to use nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm looking through the questions that came in. Um, one uh, question is, uh, I think it relates to the intermediaries. Um, um, and the question is, what is the first step in your opinion? Explore strategic partnership or establish a company in Europe and start hire a salesperson? Hmm. Uh, well, I guess I, I try to answer that question. Uh, first of all, if you want to establish an office somewhere in Europe, you have to make sure that, uh, that there is a market of what you sell. So uh, normally and generally companies do not start uh, their market entry with establishing uh, an office, but rather uh, trying to find and work together with a uh, intermediary, let it be a strategic partner, a matchmaker or a sales uh, representative. So um, I would recommend you to, uh, to, uh, to establish an office only if there is a verified uh, need of your service and uh, make sure 100% that you have a, a very strong market uh, for your services or products uh, where you enter, because otherwise it's just uh, too expensive, it takes uh, too much time and it's uh, too complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And um, Lasso, can you, or Marika, can you also tell a little bit more about uh, the role of events at this moment? Or are there many events are cancelled uh, currently during uh, COVID-19. Um, are there any other uh, yeah, possibilities to meet buyers? Will you take that one, Lasso? I, I will, yeah. Well, at this very moment, there are a number of uh, number of online uh, events. You need to know that those are not specialized uh, IT outsourcing or business process outsourcing events, but those are IT events, technology events, or uh, or, or or market uh, different market segment related uh, events. Those are online. Uh, there are limitations to it, but at the at the at this very moment, that is the only thing uh, that we have. Since there are no normal events where you can uh, you can physically go, online events are the only ones that uh, that companies can uh, can use. And I would recommend to companies to try to try to follow those events and try to make as many contacts and to use those events and the databases the organizers are putting up. Uh, to try to make as many contacts uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you maybe give one or two examples, or maybe Marika knows uh, one or two examples of such events? Yeah, well, I have been to an event. I must admit I forgot the name because it's been already a month since I attended. But it, um, uh, most events uh, are quite uh, specific. Uh, about um, uh, um, so, and they're not really about outsourcing in in general. So you have to find an e event that matches the service or the product that you that you provide. 
Um, but it, the, the, the people that organized the events were actually quite um, inventive in a, a ways um, to engage you with the other people attending. Um, uh, of course, my, my profile was not very um, uh, interesting for the attendees. Um, but still, I got some requests on, on LinkedIn to, uh, to meet up digitally, um, which was really nice. They had this like a golden ticket that, that you could find and then you could get a prize. Yeah. So when you attended different parts of the event, uh, you could find the golden ticket. So um, those initiatives made it a little bit more engaging, which mm -hmm. I, I thought was nice. And what, what do you mean with specific? So maybe for especially on um, uh, financial or soft software development or on, um, uh, I don't know, big data or so? Yeah, yeah, like that. Uh, the one I attended was about artificial intelligence. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, those, those events, uh, yeah, they're specific like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. if, if I am not mistaken, Web Summit is just uh, coming up. The online version of Web Summit is uh, is coming up, so that is going to be the next one. And uh, I I um, I trust that there are various uh, various uh, industry events uh, coming up in the in the coming month online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Then one question came in uh, after the discussion about uh, LinkedIn and finding contacts there. Um, and um, the question or remark was, um, let me see, that many companies find it, um, yeah, they find that when they contact potential buyers via LinkedIn, there is no response. And could you be a bit more specific on what to do on LinkedIn, how to get a response and to get really into contact with the buyer? Well, uh, well, that is no, that is, I would say, pretty normal because this is a this is a kind of a cold approach. Now, cold approach had never been the most effective way of of trying to uh, trying to make contacts. Uh, but what I would recommend to companies is before kind of start to bombard companies with offers and all that, try to use a kind of soft approach, try to put up useful information, try to uh, try to make sure that the companies, the potential buyers are really interested in of what you put up on uh, LinkedIn. There's another thing that maybe it's a good idea to join different LinkedIn groups uh, of uh, similar interest than yours. And well, not, yeah, no, don't don't start to post things up front, but try to listen and try to join the conversation. Prove that you are there, not only because of business interest, but because genuine interest of what that topic is uh, all about. And slowly but surely, uh, then you can work your way into that uh, to that uh, to that topic, that discussion, and well, after a certain amount of time, you might be able to establish some kind of a relationship with at least a few people and and with those people you can start to talk about uh, business so don't don't get into that uh, into that group or into that discussion with your with your unresistible offer because that's not going to work since it's a it's it's a it's a fairly cold approach uh, you have to work on it and then and then you have to invest time and energy to build some kind of business relationship and trust and to prove that you are there because of the common interest. Mm -hmm. Would uh, recommendations also work? Um, in LinkedIn, you can also get recommendations from other maybe clients that you have. Well, recommendations and, uh, and, uh, and references always work, but, but you have to get to that point to be able to show those uh, references and recommendations and all those uh, things. So as everywhere in IT, the most important thing, I mean, regardless of the channel that you have to build trust. Uh, now, European, potential European buyers um, are very cautious. Um, and, and before they get into a discussion, they, have, they, they, they always want to make sure that 
that it's their interest and you are there uh, also uh, to build the mutual interest and mutual trust. And that takes time and energy and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, time for a uh, few more questions. Um, sorry, one one more thing that came in uh, just now regarding LinkedIn. Um, well, how do you think about a paid LinkedIn account? Would that work better than a free LinkedIn account? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh because uh, because it also provide uh, far more uh, far more information about who is looking at your profile uh, and all those kind of things so i think uh, i think a paid account uh, you get far more information on on uh, on contacting people so i think a paid uh, paid account uh, eventually uh, can be interesting mm -hmm. yeah yeah um and there's also a question about um, uh, how to uh, find good matchmakers or business development partners. Is that also on LinkedIn or are there other uh, ways to find them? Well, I think that is uh, that is the question we have been uh, struggling in the past uh, at least 15 years. Uh, and the thing is that there is no silver bullet answer to that. It's more or less trial and error uh, of of trying to find uh, find uh, those uh, those matchmakers or sales representatives. Now, maybe I can I can give you one possibility that you you can find is try to look for uh, let's say HR agencies in the European Union in that country where you want to work. Uh, and those HR agencies, uh, outplacement bureaus and, uh, and, uh, and such, might be able to provide you with names of people who would be suitable for your needs. Of course, you need to, uh, you need to define what kind of people are you looking for? What kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of experiences are you looking for uh, in people? Now, in those outplacement uh, agencies, headhunters, uh, management uh, consultancies, uh, they might be able to help you to find the right people who are who are willing to uh, to put up their uh, their existing uh, network uh, and introduce you to that network. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have nearly come uh, at the end of this webinar. Um, if there is one uh, last uh, question, we are able to pose it now. Um, I see there's, yeah, there have been some remarks about uh, events also. For example, uh, we were talking about, um, some, one of you were, was talking about Web Summit. Um, I, here it is live now, but you can still participate. So maybe that's a good tip uh, for the participant. Um, all right. Um, then I, I see there are also some remarks or questions about uh, the intermediaries. Um, um, let me go uh, to the to the next slide. We can round off this webinar and I can tell you where to find more information about uh, intermediaries and all the other things that we discussed. So um, first of all, I want to thank Marike and Laszlo. Um, and um, yeah, to uh, what, what did, yeah, this is a short webinar and uh, so maybe not everything has to be uh, come uh, up uh, during the webinar, but we offer a lot of um, uh, free market research information uh, for different sectors, including the IT and BPO sector. And uh, I think in the next slide, oh, um, ah, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I see that uh, there's the uh, other presentation that is. Uh, um, I will try to, to share my screen then now because I see the, um, 
Let me see. The the presentation is a is an old version that uh, that Laszlo put up. Um, one second, please, um, so that you can see more about our market intelligence. Um, yes, this was the slide that I wanted to show you. Um, so as mentioned, uh, CBI has a lot of uh, market information also for this sector. Uh, we have, for example, information about the demand on this uh, in this sector, uh, also um, different uh, segments. Um, we have information about the latest trends, uh, what requirements uh, one needs to fulfill, and um, also a specific information, which is on the other sector information, on um, yeah, how to respond to COVID-19, for example. We also had a webinar uh, on that uh, earlier on. Um, and also the research that was uh, mentioned a couple of times about the European intermediary landscape for ITO and uh, BPO uh, services. Um, we also do have a lot of information for specific services, such as uh, uh, services in big data or blockchain or about um, uh, software development or the integrated internet of things um, and we do have uh, tips how to find buyers how to find this how to do business and how to organize your exports uh, more practically so i think that um, yeah, there's a lot of information there and uh, I hope also that you can, if you have any other questions, uh, that you can find your information uh, there. And it also includes a lot of links uh, to uh, websites where other sources that you can uh, find uh, more information on. Um, Marike, do you want to add anything on that? Or? Uh, no. 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 Okay. Well, okay. Good. Pretty nicely. <laughs> Okay, good. So, and uh, the information um, contains a lot of tips, uh, also how to practically uh, use this, uh, use this uh, information. Um, okay, and um, well, I, I want to uh, tell you one more thing. I will uh, stop sharing my screen again, and now Laszlo can uh, share his screen again. Sorry for this. Uh, Yes. And so, um, yeah, in order to stay up to date about our latest publications, you can uh, sign up for our monthly newsletter, uh, Market Intelligence Newsletter. And our Market Intelligence is available for everyone and it's uh, free on our platform. Um, so, but CBI also has a couple of support programs in specific countries. And uh, we are, for example, about to start a new program in Egypt um, next year. And for that, we are currently searching for an IT outsourcing expert for the European market. So this is a request. Uh, are you or do you know someone uh, who is an expert on that? Uh, please check our website, uh, cbi.eu, uh, in order to uh, get more information about this uh, assignment. Um, yeah, and um, I think this is the end of the, the webinar. I would like you uh, to thank you, the audience, uh, for attending. Uh, please let us know if you found this uh, webinar useful and if you have any feedback to us by filling in the survey that is coming up uh, once we stop the webinar. And uh, on behalf of CBI, I want to wish you and uh, your businesses all the very best. And thank you once again uh, for attending and uh, bye bye. Bye, Marike. Bye, Laszlo. Thank bye you, Sander. Thank you, Laszlo. Bye bye. Take care.